So the Young Lords were uh, a gang in the, in the Lincoln Park neighborhood uh, that first came in there and was being beaten up by other existing ethnic gangs at first and felt the need to organize. So they were a gang. And then in 1968, uh, we reorganized. I was the president of the group then, and, and I kind of led. I was a catalyst for reorganizing the group into a political movement. Modeled after the Black Panther Party because we wanted the same concept, but in the Puerto Rican community. And uh, in 1968, I was president. And so uh, it was my decision to transform the gang into a political movement, uh, a civil human rights movement. On September 23rd, 1968, to honor the uh, Grito de Lares in uh, Puerto Rico, it was 100 years since the cry of Lares, which was the rev the Independence Day for, for Puerto Ricans. Our main concern at that time was against colonialism in Puerto Rico and other Latino nations, and also for neighborhood empowerment, to empower our, our neighborhood in Lincoln Park, again, that was being displaced. Uh, our families went there at first. You know, they were just there for, uh, to, they wanted Spanish mass, so they were organizing for that, and they established uh, Baseball league, uh, Donamuno's uh, uh, tournament, uh, 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 plays of the crucifixion. They went door to door and blessed houses. Uh, they looked more like the pilgrims, you know, coming into a new, a new community from Puerto Rico. We were their sons and daughters and, and, and latch key children, you know, because uh, both of our parents worked. And so we had no supervision whatsoever. and. Basically, a lot of the Latinos, uh, Puerto Ricans, turned to gangs at, at that time. After we established a community in the, mid, in the midsection of Lincoln Park, after being there 24, 25 years, the city came to evict us again, because we had already been evicted from Old Town and, and, and that area where the Carl Sandburg Village was. Uh, and actually, that's, that's where the uh, hippies were, were at. So we were hanging around with the hippies at that time uh, in, 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 uh, on Wheeling and North Avenue, right by, right by Wells and North Avenue where, where the, the hippies were at. We lived with them every day. We, you know, they, they were part of that. So we all got evicted from there, basically, later. Uh, when, we, when I went to the, uh, there, I had to come out of jail. They ex-offended the gangs. You know, they, they go through a phase, and then towards the end, they get into drugs. So I got into drugs and got arrested for that. I uh, got 60 days in jail. While I'm in there, I'm, I'm hearing about the, uh, well, not, not hearing, I'm seeing the rioters from the west side, the black community. I'm also seeing the r annual roundup of, of, uh, of mi Mexican migrant workers. And, and in the jail, they're being pushed around. I'm in the hole. I'm in like at the third level cell house, uh, north cell house, and then, uh, I asked the guards, can I translate for these? These people, do, they don't speak English. You're pushing them around. They don't under, understand what you're doing. And some of these were African-American guards. And I said, you're pushing uh, our people. You're just pushing them around. They're not doing anything. They're, you know, they came here to work. Because they reminded me of my father. He was a migrant worker. So you know, uh, so, you know that, can I translate? And they said, well, you just want to get out of the cell. I said, no, I'll translate from the cell. So I was yelling back and forth. and, and the, some of the guys did appreciate it because things went more smooth once I started translating. So that in itself uh, kind of impacted me, uh, the rioters coming in. And then when I come out, the first thing I see is the hippies being beat up by the police. So I could relate to that because we were beaten up all our lives, you know, by being in a gang and that we got beat up. So that kind of uh, gave an impact. And then the, the day before the... Uh, the famous uh, August 28th event, August 27th, uh, the Church of Three Crosses did a, uh, a, 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 like a mass, like a service in Lincoln Park. And I, I believe there was about 160 people uh, arrested, about 35 uh, protesters injured, and about seven police injured. I read it in a dissertation by Murdoch, a guy named Murdoch. Uh, but uh, that, that was an experience of, because these were the people that later on worked with us to fight 
urban renewal in Lincoln Park. So, so we, it, you know, the, uh, talking about that and seeing that and, and play, finally seeing them being recognized. It's like a history that wasn't told, or, you know, and, and finally talking about that uh, was important. Reading about it uh, uh, was impactful for, for us, you know. We became leaders in, in Lincoln Park, the Young Lords, after we, we became politicized. We did, uh, originally at, during that time, the, the students for Democratic Society were occupying schools. What we did, we occupied the institutions at the neighborhood, neighborhood level, learning from SDS. We did the same thing, but at the neighborhood level. So we, we occupied McCormick Theological Seminary for a week, and we won all the demands because we were unpredictable. So they figured, let's, let's, give it, let's give them what they want. And they gave us $601,000 to be invested in low-income housing. They gave us uh, $50,000 for two free health clinics, seed money. Uh, they gave us $25,000 for the People's Law Office that still exists today with the Innocence Project and that. And they defended Panthers and everybody else. That came out of the Young Lords occupation at McCormick, their seed money. Uh, Flint Taylor and Dennis Cunningham and Jeff Haas and these people came, came from there. Uh, Jan Sussler, uh, you know, other people. Well, we kind of took the experience that, 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 that of translating for the migrant workers in the jail. I kind of took that to the community and, and saw families being evicted. You know, some of them were our relatives. Uh, at that time, the sheriff was just throwing their furniture on the street. Other people came around and just stole, uh, stole the, 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 the property of, of, of these poor people, victims. And, and that kind of uh, awakened us, the, the whole Christian thing about, about the Christians being eaten by the lions and all that passion that, that our parents were telling us about because they were involved in doing that type of organizing. So all that kind of translated to, to creating a movement and then the Black Panther Party. Uh, so that all, and, and what was going on at the Democratic Convention, all that translated for us into a need to do something in the Puerto Rican community, which was being evicted once again. They kept moving, and they didn't know which way to move. They kept moving along the lakefront, and they keep getting kicked out as the mayor was trying to build suburbs within the city at that time uh, be, uh, to bring back the people that had left when we first originally moved in after the war. So when the minorities moved in, uh, the people left, and they, and they was trying to bring back the tax dollars. So we, we didn't know. To us, it was our neighborhood, our hood. Uh, it was, we didn't know Puerto Rico. That's, that was our Puerto Rico. And so, so we wanted to protect it. And everybody was for urban renewal. That sounds like a good name, but, but we said, no, they're not, that's not their plan. It's not for us. So we began where we knew, in the taverns, on the street corners, just talking to people, uh, reading the red book on the street corner while we're drinking Valley Eye wine. Uh, so, so, you know, uh, and smoking or whatever we're doing, you know, smoking. You know, we're just hanging out like we always hang out, but, but now we're talking politics to each other. Finally, at the end, we occupied the people's church. And that's how we got into, and how we got an office. We just occupied and stayed there and opened up programs. The church was dying. They were glad that we we opened up programs for the community. So, so uh, and we worked together with the church and they together renamed it People's Church. In, in the 68th convention, I had, when I came out of the, the jail uh, for, uh, I was trying to get a job. So uh, a way to get a job was to go to the Argonne National Laboratory, uh, work half a day as a janitor and the other half study for the GED program. So our professor, uh, Mike Lawson, who was a civil rights activist, wore the sheik, the sheik and everything, decided, you know, let me take you to the Democratic Convention so you guys can have a field trip. So, you know, I, this is a bunch of gang members at Argonne National Laboratory, janitor, janitors, and we're excited to go. You know, we're going on a field trip for school for our GED program. So we go there, and, and the day that we go there happens to be the same day that the police started breaking heads of, of the hippies. So they were walking through there and the police started running our way, but then they, they saw we were not from there the way we were dressed as gang members, and they just went around us. But that was our, our field trip. That was the experience. 
The next day, that they were in Lincoln Park, and I was near the park by Old Town. I was on my way to Old Town, and, and I saw Bobby Seale uh, speaking, talking about the pigs and that, and I had just got out of jail. I said, I need to get the heck out of here. So I'm passing by, and the police are going, hey, Chacha, how, how you doing, Chacha? And I say, hey, I'm not in this. Let me, let me you know, but they, 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 they could say, oh, yeah, we know you're not with those communists and all that. But, you know, that in itself had an impact. Like, you know, these people are getting beaten up for nothing. They're, they're talking about peace. We already, knew, we already knew how the hippies were. They were for peace. They were not for violence, you know, so they were getting, they were getting their heads busted. And we're, when we're looking at them like these are the same police that are beating us every day, you know, uh, uh, that have been beating us up. So it had a, it had a big impact because we knew them. We knew the police. So it, actually, we feel that everything we did was a victory. I mean, the first, the first action that we took was to go to the Department of Urban Renewal that was located in Lincoln Park at that time the Community Conservation Council. We walked into that building and, and, they, and we told them no more meetings. It was the first meeting we've ever gone through as, as, a, as a gang or as a group. We said no more meetings until you get, get black, Latino, and poor white representation. We had heard that from one of the, one of the radio programs or whatever. Uh, and they looked at us like we were crazy. So to make our point, we but trashed the entire place, the plumbing, the display that they had with empty houses in the areas where we lived. Uh, we broke that up to pieces. Uh, we, you know, we tore the whole place up and it got shut down for three or four months. So to us, that was a victory. We all went home. Nobody got arrested. I got arrested later, but I was the only one. So then uh, that was followed up by a, a, an organized riot, we called it, because people were saying, you guys, are, when you riot, you break your own neighborhood. So we, we, we synchronized our watches. A lot of people had been in Vietnam. And everybody took a window, a store window uh, that was not Latino. And, and all the windows came down, all the, especially the ones that, that said Old Town, because we had been kicked out of Old Town. So all of them came down. Uh, and, and it was another victory. Everybody's giving each other five. And a lot of these business people, actually, they supported us later when we built the, the group, the movement and that. But then we occupied McCormick Seminary. We occupied a park that was empty that they wanted to turn into a, a, a tennis court, a $1,000 a year membership tennis court. Uh, we, we turned it into a play lot for the, for the kids. Buckminster Fuller came and gave us the use of the, his geodesic dome that, that he used that for the, for the uh, moon landing, Buckminster Fuller. And, and we put that, that replica in, in people's park for the, ki for the, for the kids. There's, we, have pictures in the archives, but anyway. Uh, but we kept on doing that. Uh, every time they attacked us, we came back. Uh, the Red Squad went against us, the uh, gang intelligence unit. Uh, of course, Cointel Pro, because we were working with the uh, Rainbow Coalition and the Black Panther Party. They, so they attacked us, they came here. We had to go underground, but we, we came back. Uh, I turned myself in, did a year in jail. As soon as I came out, I ran for alderman and got 39 percent of the vote for the first time that I ever voted was for me. So, so then after that, we helped elect Harold Washington, the first mayor. When he won, I was the only one on stage introducing him before 100,000 people in 1983 in Humboldt Park, 100,000 Puerto Ricans. So that was a vict very big victory for the young lords at that time. We changed the gang. So we proved I became a counselor later too, you know, but I mean, we prove that a gang can change if you work with them. Uh, it's not easy. I mean, there is not, it's not, a, it's like someone with, with a substance abuse problem. You don't change over, you know, you got, if you, if you have an addiction to food, that doesn't change overnight. Or if you have an addiction to cigarettes, you sometimes you relapse two or three times, but eventually you get the message and you change. So we had to do that with the gang and we did that. We took our time and they changed it. We, you know, it wasn't that we changed, but they changed themselves because they began to believe in themselves and believe that, that in the change that needed for, for us and our community. And that's what changed them. So there's a lot of hope there that we, that we can create today if we, we just work uh, to, change, uh, to change these youth. You know, uh, 
One of the things that Thrasher, the guru of gangs, talked about, he says, uh, neighborhoods in transition are breeding grounds for gangs. So urban renewal kept transitioning neighborhoods. And they don't want to, yet the city hall doesn't want to accept an, any responsibility for what they did. They dislocated uh, support networks in, in, in barrios and, and, and neighbor and ghettos. And they, and they did not work with the poor uh, at all. And they don't want to take responsibility for that. So today they're concerned about all this violence. Uh, it's not going to be changed overnight, but they, it starts with breaking the denial and accepting responsibility and, and putting effort to, to make those changes. You know, we don't want that history to go in vain. You know what I'm saying? We, you know, the, there were people that were killed. Reverend Bruce Johnson, Eugenia Johnson, his wife, were murdered. It's a cold case that still exists today. Uh, uh, only two months later, Fred Hampton was killed and Mark Clark. Uh, and, and then uh, all across the country, Panthers were being killed. So, so it, uh, people were killed, people went to jail, uh, and it was a legitimate movement. Uh, it was a broad-based movement. Uh, the Northside Cooperative Ministry that worked with us had a, something like 50 or 60 churches working with them. So this was a church movement, a broad-based movement. We had business people working with us. It wasn't just the Young Lords. In fact, I became president of the Lincoln Park Poor People's Coalition, uh, which represented all these different sectors of the community. So, so the Young Lords transformed themselves and became leaders, community leaders, and then they brought other people uh, together. It became a, a nationwide movement.